For those of you out of the loop, Octopath Traveler is a turn-based RPG developed by Square Enix's Business Division 6 and Acquire, and was published by Nintendo for the Nintendo Switch on July of 2018. The game was directed by Keisuke Miyauchi, designed by Kota Asaki, and composed by Yasunori Nishiki a relatively unknown group of developers. The game was produced by Tomoyo Asano and Masashi Takahashi, both notable for their work in the Bravely series. Upon its release, the game sold so well in Japan that it actually sold out, prompting an apology from Square Enix not once, but twice. During the development, the producers and developers were actually put into a new division all of their own, becoming Business Division 11. But let's get back to the game. In Octopath Traveler, as the name would imply, there are eight paths within the game. Each of these paths, or stories, is comprised of four chapters and feature their own protagonist. At the beginning of the game, you choose one of these eight heroes, and upon completing their first chapter, the world opens up for you to explore as you please. Along the way, you can visit the remaining seven characters, and upon assisting with their first chapters, you recruit them to assist you on your journey. The order in which you recruit these characters is up to the player, and recruiting them is entirely optional. It should also be noted that each of these paths within the game are self-contained, at least on the surface. Because of the freedom to play the game as you desire, the stories were written to overlap very little, though certain connections can be inferred after completing several chapters. But because these stories are siloed, not all of the stories were created equally, though the attempt was admirable. The story of Primrose Azelhart, in particular, was a standout of the game. Hers is a story of revenge, which doesn't take long to go to some pretty dark places. Good then. Purr sweetly and I may give you a treat. Don't dally when you're done with your show. I will be waiting in my chamber. I'll have you purr for me some more. Of the conflicts, among all the other stories, hers was the one that felt the most real. The one that felt like it was pushing boundaries that big budget Final Fantasy titles wouldn't dare to push. Another standout character for me was that of Alfin Greengrass, a traveling apothecary who's just out in the world to do as much good as he can. And while the story does have some dark points here and there, moments of self-doubt and reflection and that sort of thing, overall, it's a very light-hearted tale about meeting and helping people because that's just the kind of guy he is. The result of this storytelling method is that the game feels sort of like a collection of short stories that explore telling an adventure from different angles, and the result is a wholly unique and enjoyable experience. The storytelling within Octopath Traveler has some slight drawbacks though. It would have been really nice to see more time and care put into recruitment stages of Octopath where characters meet up and join the party. As things are now, when characters meet you, they are given a brief glimpse of what that character is up to and then you are asked if you want to join them. When you choose to join them, there's no real interaction to speak of though. Their chapter just simply starts and you tag along for the ride. It isn't until later chapters when you'll start to see characters interact with one another during optional cutscenes. These optional cutscenes typically trigger in taverns or after key events when you have certain combinations of party members in your group of four and pressing the plus button allows the interaction to play out. It is within these scenes that characters interact with one another, learn about each other, and offer advice to one another. These don't really affect the stories of the game or the direction that they go. You don't make choices within them, but by observing them, you can start to get a better feel for the characters themselves, and in my time with each of the characters, none really seemed particularly great. And the least enjoyable story arc for me probably belonged to Hanit, the Huntress. And that has nothing to do with her as a character, and her story was in fact pretty great, but her strange old English dialogue was kind of difficult to read out loud during my streams, and her voice actress deserves a medal for her efforts. But that dialect is limited to just Hanit, who speaks very rarely, and her master, who only makes brief appearances here and there, so in the end it's kind of forgivable. And you know, when I have to dig that far to pull up a negative about a story arc, oh, the rest of the story's gotta be pretty darn good. The world presented in Octopath Traveler is a large continent and covers everything from dense, lush forests to harsh, rocky mountaintops in all eight regional biomes for the eight characters. In each region, there are a few towns and plenty of hidden dungeons and shrines to be found between each. While the game regrettably doesn't feature an overworld map, it does have the next best thing. 
each area is still interconnected by paths through the world, similar to games like Earthbound or Grandia. Upon visiting each location, fast travel is enabled and accessible via the world map, which is a huge time saver that I didn't really locate for longer than I'd care to admit. <laughs> And speaking of the world map, while it is overall good for the aforementioned fast travel mechanic, it's not especially helpful for navigation, so be prepared to use your noggin during exploration. Each of the regions in the game feels very unique, and each set of towns within seems to share a similar culture and design aesthetic that fits in with their surroundings. The cultures feel believable in the contexts of these regions, helping each region feel defined and cohesive. The transition between the biomes were nearly non-existent though, which would have been a nice cherry on top, but as is, the world presentation is pretty fantastic. Battle with an Octopath Traveler is one of the game's strongest aspects. On the surface, the combat is a simple turn-based affair that takes presentation cues from Final Fantasy VI, with heroes on the right, enemies on the left, and gigantic enemy pixel art during boss battles. However, playing the game like a simple turn-based RPG where you're free to zone out while grinding easy XP will only end in tears. Octopath Traveler demands your full attention at all times. Simple enemy encounters will be the end of you if you let your guard down down, well into the final act of the game even. In order to fully master the battles, you will need to plan out your moves in order to maximize damage using boost points, a feather taken from the cap of earlier Bravely series titles, similar to what we've seen in Watermelon Games' Pure Solar. Boost points are accumulated by each character during battle, one per round of battle. Points are spent in order to boost the number of strikes per turn or boost the overall strength or duration of special attacks such as spells, skills, or creature summons and so on. Up to three boost points can be pumped into a single turn without affecting skill point consumption, so pumping one boost point into a heal skill is more efficient than using a heal spell twice, for instance. At later levels, boost points must be used to enable the character's best attacks and skills, making BP integral to the flow of battle. Additionally, as you explore the world, you will uncover shrines which unlock secondary job classes that may be applied to characters, opening up weapon types, skills, and stat bonuses. In doing so, you can create some extremely powerful characters with skill combinations that could break most other games. However, these would-be game-breaking mechanics have been balanced for, encouraging if not requiring the player to try to outsmart the game during the final bosses of the game. Each character also has unique abilities during combat, some of which are completely independent of character classes. For instance, only Alfin is able to concoct medicine on the fly during battle, which is immensely helpful during battle. Even characters who take on the Apothecary secondary class will not have access to these skills, making each character feel wholly unique and irreplaceable. If you're a veteran JRPG fan who's been looking for a challenge designed to put your abilities to the test while also bringing fun to the table, look no further because this game was made for people like us, and mastery of the system is both challenging and highly rewarding. However, battle encounters are random rather than scripted, which will be a turnoff to some. There are skills and items that can be utilized to reduce the encounter rate though, uh, though I didn't use any of these during my playthrough, and as a result, I didn't need to do too much grinding until the final hours of the game. Gameplay outside of battle is competent, though less impressive. There aren't any mini-games to speak of, and side quests are a little repetitive. Following the same blueprint of find a person, bring the person somewhere, or fight the person, or steal an item from that person, and return the item to the quest giver. The game isn't straightforward in telling you which of these options you need to do, or who these people are that you need to locate, so you need to be diligent about looking for context clues. Each character of the eight have unique skills for use outside of battle. Therion can steal from and Tressa can buy from NPCs. Alfin can inquire while Cyrus can interrogate, and so on. Each of these skills has a mirror, a nice way of doing things, or an underhanded way of doing things, which may harm your reputation in towns. Not all options are equal, though. Therion, for instance, during my playthrough, was able to steal the winter coat off NPCs during a blizzard and they'd never notice, whereas Tressa would need to spend tens of thousands of leaves, the in-game currency, to acquire the same item from the same NPC. Sometimes, during the main quest lines, characters would need to rely on these skills to move the story forward, which was a nice touch. However, when the battles are so much more fun and engaging, I often just wanted to skip ahead to get to the fighting again. 
Octopath Traveler has a way of giving me that big stupid grin on my face every time I hear the main theme song kick in, and the character theme songs are evocative. They fit perfectly the characters that they represent, and looking back over the stories of each character, the music has become inseparably linked from those stories in my mind. Tressa's theme song in particular has become one of my favorites. The carefree and optimistic harmonica resonates with my love of the story in such a deep level. While the music isn't necessarily wildly impressive on a technical level, they're impressive in how expressive they are. I don't know who this Yasunori Nishiki is, but I'll definitely be keeping my ears up for more of their work in the future. Another of the main strengths of Octopath Traveler is just how gorgeous this game is. In the past, I've described the game as looking the way SNES RPGs feel, and I stand by that statement 1000%. The game features a top-down aesthetic reminiscent of SNES RPGs, but takes place on a polygonal field. Blur is added to the background and foreground resulting in a quasi-tilt-shift photography aesthetic, helping the 2D objects in the game feel like tangible miniatures you could reach out and touch. Special care and attention has been paid to the lighting of the game, which adds to the effect God rays and bloom effects were added in such a way that helps keep the game from feeling like just another sprite-based indie title and creates a look that feels like an evolution of the PlayStation-era RPGs like Grandia and Xenogears aesthetic rather than just another retro throwback. Octopath Traveler is fantastic and will be a game that sticks in my mind for years to come. I hope that this game becomes a trendsetter and encourages developers to explore the newly created space for turn-based RPGs that Business Division 11 has carved out. The story of the game has its drawbacks, but is sufficient enough to deliver the player to the meat of the game, its combat, and players will be treated to an immensely charming audiovisual presentation that feels reminiscent of classic JRPGs, yet remains entirely unique. So is Octopath Traveler the savior of RPGs? Well, maybe not. But it's the game that I needed right now, and I think it's the game that the industry needed right now. And for all these reasons, the game has easily earned itself a spot in the game collection. If this game has piqued your interest, I recommend checking out my review of Pure Solar, which features a similar boost mechanic in its fighting system. An alternative recommendation is my review of Grandia, which I talked about earlier in this review, and captures a similar mood of adventure that just cannot be beaten.